Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Emma and if you're new here, I make videos about sewing, mostly hand sewing. So thank you for joining me today and thank you to anyone who is coming back and has been here before. I really appreciate you checking out my videos and watching. It really means so much to me. So I'm back in my sewing room today and I'm working on some lovely hex petal flowers and I'll show you a bit more about those in a little while but I've just been away on a lovely holiday. It's actually our first holiday in over two years for obvious reasons and it was really nice to have a change of scenery. It was a holiday in the south of England. We live in the north so it was a good few hours in the car and it was a great opportunity for me to take some sewing with me because I was going to be a passenger in the car. Before the pandemic, I used to take um, sewing projects on holiday with us all the time, but we haven't been away uh, until now. But in my day-to-day -day life, I do take sewing with me when I'm going to drop my son off at a club and I have to wait in the car for him. But most of the time, over the last two years or so, I've been doing most of my sewing in the house because I haven't been going anywhere. So today's video is my top tips for taking your sewing on holiday, not involving a plane. Because we know the rules on planes all differ in terms of what scissors you can take and things like that. And I, because I haven't been on a plane in over 10 years, I don't know anything about that really. So today's video is just focusing on little tips and tricks for taking your sewing out and about with you, whether it's just waiting in the car or whether it is packing it and taking it on holiday and doing some stitching in the car whilst you're traveling. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is planning. It's really important to carefully plan which projects you're going to take. And there are a lot of different factors that affect what you will take. For example, whether or not you are going to take a sewing machine with you, whether you're just going to stick to hand sewing. It all depends on what type of traveling you do, and where you're going and what sort of holiday you're having. So for me, it was always going to be English paper piecing. I wasn't planning on taking a sewing machine. I wanted my sewing to just fit in around the holiday. It wasn't a sewing holiday, if you know what I mean. So I wanted something small and portable that wasn't going to be too cumbersome. So I didn't want to take any project where I'm joining blocks together. I wanted to take a project where I'm just joining pieces to make small blocks. Anything bigger than that where I'd have something big on my knee just wouldn't work in the car. And I also didn't want to take anything where I was needing to remove papers. So I decided on the on two quilt projects that I wanted to take. My hex petal flowers that I'm making, they're really easy to do. They're very quick and a great portable project. So I knew that they would be ideal and also I'm working on my grandmother's rose garden quilt, which I want to make a video about really soon. So I wanted to make some blocks for that. So they were the two projects that I was going to take. I knew they would be easy to take with me. So perfect for traveling. So once you've decided what which projects you want to take, you need to think about how much to take with you. If it's a large quilt project, do you really need to take the whole thing? No. So you have to kind of estimate how much time you're going to spend sewing. Am I going to be in the car for four hours and have four hours stitching time? Or am I going to spend some time on the beach and be able to sew there? Will there be evenings to fill with sewing? So you have to kind of estimate how much time you think you'll have and then add on a little bit because I like to overestimate how much sewing time I'll have and take more than enough because running out would be a disaster. So tip number two is to try and gauge how much you think you'll be able to do on your holiday. And when it comes to the preparation stage, then you'll be able to prepare enough to keep you going. Tip number three is preparation. And I think this is key when it comes to traveling with your sewing. For me, I knew I didn't want to be cutting fabric and basting shapes while I was on the go. It's much easier to just stitch the shapes together, in my opinion. 
perhaps for you you might prefer to do the cutting and basting while you're on the go but I actually like to have a solid surface whether it's a table in front of me a cutting mat my tray on my knee I like to have all of that for my cutting and basting and also if you're glue basting it can get a little bit messy if you're doing lots and lots of shapes and you can get gluey fingers and if you're in the car it's not ideal then you need to try and get your hands clean so for me I like to prepare in advance and baste as many shapes as I can as many shapes as I think I'm going to need for the entire holiday and that's what I did I set myself a target for how much sewing I wanted to get done and then added a little bit extra on and then I spent the few days leading up to the holiday cutting fabric basting my shapes and getting everything ready so I knew I could make 21 hex petal flower blocks and I knew that I could make three grandmother's rose garden blocks and I thought that that would be manageable enough for me during my holiday. So tip number three, prepare your shapes in advance. I personally think that's much easier. So tip number four is storage because when you're traveling on the go and you have lots of little pieces if you're doing English paper piecing, you really need a good way of storing them so that they're handy to take out and use when you want to, but also so that they're all secure and they're not going to get lost or spill out everywhere. So you need to think what sort of storage containers or bags or pouches that you might use. Now, because I was traveling in the car and we had a lot of space, I could take my small storage box with me and I knew that this was going to be perfect for putting all of the hex petal pieces in. I decided that it would be great to have this on my knee in the car. I could rest my hands on it while I was sewing and then when I needed a piece I could just open the lid, take the piece that I wanted and close it again and everything would be secure in there and everything is organised and easy to find. So because space wasn't an issue for me I could take this box with me and it worked really really well. That was what I did in the car but when we went to the beach for example I just put a few pieces for the block that I was working on in this little this little pouch which is actually a pencil case but it works brilliantly for taking your sewing out and about because you can put your pieces that you need in there and then in the zip compartment at the front you can put your sewing notions, you can put scissors for example in there if you want to and they're nice and safe and secure. You could also use the uh, free pattern that I have for a scissors case that really protects your scissors and keeps them safe in your bag and you're not going to cut anybody or anything with them because they're nice and secure in the little scissors case so that's ideal for travelling. But it might be that you don't want to take sharp scissors with you and when we come on to excellent notions for travelling I'll show you some alternatives. So a little bag to keep your things in while you're out and about, pouches to store your pieces in and maybe even taking a small storage box with you. Those might be great options for taking your sewing out and about and storing it securely. So my next tip is to tell you about some really useful gadgets that there are for taking your sewing out and about. Things that are really useful and things that I've used, tried and tested and really loved while I was out and about. So out of all of the sewing notions and things that I took with me, I'd say my number one best tip and the most useful thing to have is, is this Clover dome threaded needle case. Now I've had one of these for many years and I just think it's really brilliant, especially if you're doing a lot of your sewing in the car. It has space in it to put 10 needles and what you do is get 10 different needles. Of course you don't have to fill it, but what I did was I got 10 needles and before I set off on my travels I threaded each needle and put it into the needle case. So you thread your needle, insert it into the gap in the case, make sure your thread is in the correct gaps and you twist the blue part of the case and as you twist it 
that wraps the thread inside in a special way so that it's not going to get tangled. When your thread has disappeared, you can then thread the next needle. So it actually comes with full instructions, so it's, it's easy to follow and it's really easy to do. And what I did was I threaded up 10 needles and had them in the case at all times. So for my traveling down there, it just meant that I could just pull a needle out and do my stitching and then I just put the needle back in the case and took the next one out when I was ready to change thread. And the lid of the case locks securely so your needles are not going to go anywhere. You could use a little needle case like a hexagon like the hexagon needle book or anything to store your needles but when you're storing your needles already threaded and maybe you're going in and out of your bag with them they could get tangled up and this just means that nothing's going to get tangled nothing's going to get lost you're not going to lose a needle it's not going to fall on the floor in the car or anything like that it's a really great gadget and I'm really and I really loved using it and just thought it was brilliant so that's really one of my top tips for traveling is to get one of the dome threaded needle cases another great sewing notion for traveling with is the bobinator made by wonderful and i have a sue daily one here both of these things are in my shop i only have a couple left but you can find them readily available in most sewing shops haberdasheries quilting shops i'm sure you'll be able to find them on amazon too so the bobinator is really great because it stores four bobbins of thread and that means that they're not going to come unraveled in your bag. You can put them in and out as many times as you like and all the thread is kept securely. To use the bobinator you can take one end off and you can just put the bobbins in that you think you'll need that day. And then you can put the end back on and you can switch them around to have the colour that you want at the top and then you can use it. So I just find that another really handy little gadget to have in your bag, perfect for if you're stitching on the go. Another thing that I love to take with me is this tiny pair of snips. Because I'd already prepared all of my fabric and pieces beforehand, I knew I didn't need a sharp pair of scissors or a big pair of scissors to take with me at all which is really great because we have our son with us and I would just hate for him to end up getting hold of a sharp pair of scissors. So these snips, they are sharp, but they're not going to do any damage. They have rounded tips to them. They're tiny and they are just excellent for cutting threads. So I really like using them. It's also really helpful to have a needle threader with you because if you did need to re-thread a needle, especially if you're in the car, it can be so difficult when you're moving about to try and get a fine thread through a fine needle. So if you did end up using all of your 10 pre-threaded needles and you needed to thread some more, a needle threader just makes life so much easier. My final tip is to take some sort of portable light with you if you can. One of the things that can make it really difficult to sew in the evenings for me is poor lighting. You can never underestimate how important good lighting is for hand sewing. So this light is a tabletop light, so it's rechargeable and then it stands on the table next to you. You can open it up and it will cast a light across. It's a really great daylight light to take with you. It's very portable and lightweight and packs up really nicely. And the other light is one I've shown before, which clips onto anything, which again is really, really useful. You could clip it onto a table, you could clip it onto a chair perhaps. So both lights are really great for traveling. I just took the little clip on light with me and it was absolutely great for just clipping onto the bed and it shone over my shoulder and made, meant that I could see what I was doing. So I do think having a little portable light is really useful because you might not know what the lighting setup's going to be like in the place where you're staying. And if it's too dark, it's going to make sewing in the evenings impossible, really. So having a little portable lamp is really useful. So they are my top tips for traveling with your sewing. Have you got any more tips or things to share about taking your sewing out and about? Because if you do, please let us know in the comments. 
what you do to take your sewing with you and to make it all easier, I'd really love to know. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll, I'll pop a few clips in now to show you some lovely sights of where we went and those lovely vintage quilts that were in Thomas Hardy's house. And I'll see you again really soon. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.